Have you driven a Ford lately? Ford and your local Ford invite you to see the 1983 Ford Cars and Trucks present the USFL, the big plays. Lots of big plays Sunday afternoon. Nickerson Field, Boston, Massachusetts. Philly Stars looking to clinch the Atlantic Division. Leading 3-0. Second quarter of Tuzina to Willie Collier. Touchdown and a big 10-0 lead for the Stars. But into the fourth quarter now. It's 10-6. Philly hanging on. Boston's Johnny Walton, the quarterback, finds Charlie Smith for the biggest catch of the day for the Breakers. 17 yards and a score. 13-10 Boston. But Philadelphia regains the lead. Here's that combination again. Tuzina to Collier. Touchdown. Philly up. 7 17-13, but there is no quit in this Boston Breaker team. Out of the shotgun formation, quarterback Walden looks for the rookie. Nolan France from Tulane, a big catch to keep the drive. Down to the store, 14-yard line. Then last play of the game. Walden from the shotgun, four seconds left. He's looking for Charlie Smith. Off his hands, but a touchdown. Frank Lockett catches it. The biggest play maybe for the Boston Breakers all year. They upset Philadelphia 21-17. And then last Sunday afternoon, Oakland Coliseum, the invaders, a must-win situation against L.A. Early on, midway first quarter, Fred Fasana, Gordon Banks, the little guy, makes a big catch for 12 yards down to the three, and Jack Holmes takes it into the end zone. Invaders lead it 7-0 early. The Express later on in the second quarter, draw play, 15 yard gain for little LaRue Harrington down to the five yard line and this drive would be capped off by a big touchdown plunge by little Wilbert Hazlitt and it's 7-7 at halftime in the second half though watch this fluke play the biggest play of the day Fred Bassano looking for Raymond Chester now it's good Chester catches it outside the camera range then he fumbles on the two and he gets on his hands and knees and recovers to give Oakland a 14-7 lead the Oakland uh, defense came up big as well sacking L quarterbacks all day there goes Tom Ramsey to the turf and little Kevin Shea a big performance two field goals bang there's one of them and Oakland wins it over LA the final the invaders 20 and the LA Express 10 and last Sunday at RFK Stadium nation's capital a big day for Herschel Walker and the New Jersey Generals first play there goes Herschel 83 yards from the line of scrimmage it goes for a touchdown it is the longest run from scrimmage in USFL history and starts Herschel off on a 194 yard rushing day that would also be a record but Billy Taylor was not to be outdone for the Washington Federals here he gets a nice 32-yard touchdown run. And at this point, Washington trailed just 17 to 16 in the third quarter. The Federals did go ahead in this game. They get possession again amid the raindrops in the nation's capital. Had a good drive. Watch the pass play here. Mike Ponzi to Joey Walters. Big play man on this day. Walters had 193 yards receiving. Pretty good day for the All-American out of Clemson. That's set up an 11-yard. Hohensy pass to Craig James. The former SMU great lugs it into the end zone. 23-17 Federals. And in the fourth quarter, after New Jersey tied it, Washington goes ahead. Hohensy to Harris. The extra point, no good. So the Generals trail by six. Here's Sam Bowers catching a pass from Jeff Napple. Touchdown, the extra point, no good. We're tied at 29. No time left. Generals have the ball. Only thing they can do, kick a 50-yard field goal. Little Dave Betts gets his foot into it. The biggest kick of the year for the New Jersey Generals, just over the crossbar. New Jersey wins it at the gun, the final. The Generals 32 and the Federals 29. The Pontiac Silverdome, Tampa Bay Bandits, Michigan Panthers in a big Central Division till last Monday night. Following the opening kickoff, the Panthers march down the field on the arm of Batman, number 11, Bobby Aver, a quarterback. Look now as Abear drops back, lofting one up for tight end Mike Cobb. The big guy runs under it for the touchdown catch, 7-0 Michigan. Same score, second quarter now, Michigan to stop. Rick Partridge is back to punt. The rookie Gary Anderson back to receive the punt for Tampa Bay. He must hear some footsteps because the kick... Well, it hits him in the face mask, and Kyle Borland makes the big fumble recovery for the Michigan Panthers. The Panthers are doing well now because they're turning these kind of plays into points on the other end. For example, after that fumble, there goes little Terry Miller on the big touchdown run. Panthers led at halftime in this game, 19 to nothing. Meanwhile, the head coach of the Bandits, Steve Spurrier, exhorting his quarterback, Mike Kelly. Come on, guy. I know you can do better than that. Third quarter, though, the Bandits are stalled again. Zen and Anderson has to punt. Anthony Carter shows Mr. Anderson what to do with a punt return. The first punt return for a touchdown in USFL history. There goes Carter. Nobody going to catch him. 57 yards and a touchdown. Michigan romps over Tampa Bay in the Silver Dome, 43 to 7. And then last Monday night at Rainy Soldier Field in Chicago, the Arizona Wranglers in town. That's the way it was in Soldier Field. Bring an umbrella or something else to keep dry. Second quarter, Blitz quarterback Tim Cagle trying to come back from an 8 to 6 deficit. Here's a good way to do it. Go to the league's leading receiver, Trumaine Johnson, with a big catch. Hey, Trumaine, watch out for the fence, buddy. Get your hands up. Whoa! Put on the brakes. 13 to 8, the Blitz are in front. Now, Mike Meese, no relation, back to punt for Arizona. Little Lenny Willis receives the punt. 
and scampers some 40 yards. And watch Willis when he gets into the end zone. This is the second punt return for a touchdown to the USFL. Both on the same night, Willis slides and he's safe at home. And the route is on. The blitz go for two points. Frank Corral, the kicker, goes out for the pass. Cagle, the holder, finds him. And it's a two-point conversion. 21 to 8, Chicago. Good night for the Chicago ground game. Ohio State All-American Tim Spencer sweeping in for the score. The Blitz are rolling 31 to 11. It was basically a brutal night for the Wrangler offense. Backup quarterback Dan Minucci from the shotgun. Low snap. He's going to get trapped for a safety. Ah, what the heck? Throw the ball out. Look at the coach on the sideline, Doug Shively. It's one of those nights when Shively feels like crying. What else can go wrong? Chicago whips Arizona 36 to 11. And then last week at Mile High Stadium in Denver, the coaching debut for Craig Morton is the Denver Gold host Birmingham, 13-7 Birmingham in the second half. Denver strikes back, though. The punt is fumbled by Ron Frederick. The Denver Gold recover. A big play here, a big turnover down at the Birmingham 11-yard line. That set up Denver quarterback Fred Mortensen, the kid from Arizona State. He runs the option play, four yards and a touchdown. The point after good, Denver led it 14-13. Another big turnover in favor of Denver. Bob Lane back to pass for Birmingham. Uh-oh, there goes David Dumars, untouched, 78 yards with the interception to return the gold. With now an eight-point lead at 21 to 13 on the biggest play of the night at Mile High Stadium. Fourth quarter, though, the Stallions, a ball control team, they threaten. Bob Lane connects with Daryl Mason, his tight end, for a three-yard touchdown to make it 21-19. And Craig Morton says, uh-oh, they're going to go for two points and they're going to make it. Well, they go for two, but Gabinski gets the pass, cannot make it over the goal line. They don't make it. David Martin puts the stops to him. Denver has the upset over Birmingham, 21-19. Have you driven a Ford lately? Ford and your local Ford dealer who invites you to see the 1983 Ford Cars and Trucks have presented the USFL, the big plays.